Hi guys, it's Kara. I'm going to do a quick video of how I make my faux PVC candles. This one has been coated with hot glue, primered and painted. The inside is coated. So I will show you how I do this process. First, I start with a two inch PVC pipe flat on the bottom. I like to cut it at an angle. It makes it more interesting. Then I run the edge here on a grinder just to get that hard edge off. I think it helps. Then I get a 3 8 inch EVA crafting foam. You can get it at TNT Cosplay, I think it is. And then I just got this tool in, which I love, Cos Tools Circle Cutter. So I have this thing set. There's a gauge on the inside where you can do measurements. So I have it set to cut out a two inch hole, which is the diameter of my two inch space in this candle. So you're gonna have it set. Let's see if you can see that, okay. And then you're just gonna rotate it and it's slowly gonna cut through the EVA foam and then you'll feel it catch on the cutting mat down below and then you know that's when you stop, right there. Okay, you're gonna pull it out, you back it up, so when you set it down, you don't dull your tip, your blade, and then it cuts out a perfect circle of EVA, which I then pop into my candle to create the base. And you're gonna get that level and flat where it's inside where you like it and then we're gonna move on to the glue now we're going to coat the PVC candle with hot glue I like this black and Decker battery powered hot glue gun it's awesome not having a cord in the way and I usually takes about a stick and a half to coat a candle the way that I do it because I do the outside and I coat the inside, which gives it a more seamless, fluid, welted, melted wax look that you otherwise don't get if you only do the outside. So once you pop in your two inch piece of EVA foam, then you're gonna take your gun, gonna do a quick line around the edge that's gonna help set it. Then I flip it sideways and I just start pumping the glue in back and forth and just let it flow, just kind of like rotisserie, just go back and forth, just let it flow and melt together. already out of glue Open. Okay. I'm gonna keep going okay. Go back and forth you need to get full coverage it will all just melt together okay then you're gonna go on the inside and you're just gonna go around in a circle, around and around, until it is all coated. It will flow out and become level. That's what you want. Okay, so that's all gonna level out. Then you're gonna start at the top and you're gonna go around and then you're just gonna start drawing. Do things in odd numbers, levels. Okay, you wanna hit that edge so that it runs inside, top, and down. You wanna make sure you get it everywhere. And it's slowly gonna start, cause you want it to ooze into that inside so that becomes seamless and it looks more realistic that edge okay. don't
don't be shy with the glue. Just go for it. I buy hot glue sticks by the case now. edge okay that's gonna start melting down into itself where is it okay and then you're gonna you want to add extra drips you can add more on top to build more layer so right here I'm kind of missing some it's best to do it while it's all still hot and melty that looks pretty good you can see the inside it's like all waxy looking. It's gonna give you much more of a realistic effect. Okay. And that's how I do my candles. Next up, I will paint it. Here is how I prep my candles for a paint job. So here it is. Your glue will be all set up, ready to prime. First, I spray it with flat white primer, leave it out in the sun, let it get good and dry. That way it can bond to the hot glue. Then for color, I spray this heirloom white satin. It's a very good off white for a candle. So here's one that's painted and dry. I'll show you how I glaze it to give it more of an antique look and make all of the drips stand out. I'm a professional artist by trade. So this is a professional line of glazing pigments from Faux FX. So this is Faux Cream Color Earth Brown. It's a very good universal color for aging. You can use it on walls, you can use it on cabinets, can use it on um, all kinds of things. Okay. So I'm just gonna give this a try. I have not tested this out yet, so this is first run. These are Pierre pointed brushes for doing cabinet glazing. I will add in the description um, where you can purchase these. This is a small one. So then you're just gonna take it, a little bit of your brown, and then you're just gonna stick it in there every which way. Oh, it does not like this spray paint. Okay, it's kind of beating up. I might have to try something else. Or maybe because it's not dry enough yet. You're gonna go everywhere. Okay. And it has a slow dry time, so you have plenty of working time. Hit it everywhere. And then we're gonna wipe some off so it's okay if we kind of make a mess with this. Just get the product on your candle. Okay, so we'll get it all inside. Okay, then we will take a rag and we can wipe it down. If you want a cleaner look and then it will stay inside the drips and accentuate that shape or you can leave it heavy everywhere if you want a more haunted look I like it to be more subtle but yeah earth brown is the perfect color for a realistic candle okay and then we're gonna wipe through the center 
And if you have way too much pigment, you can always wet your towel also. That looks pretty good. Now because I was touching, I can feel it's getting tacky. It's almost dry. But if you want to add more, you can just go back in and hit more spaces, almost in a dry brushing manner. And then try to get rid of any fingerprints that you had from holding it still. I like to highlight that edge. To me, that looks good. Oh, there we are right there. Okay. Okay. Um, another method you can use for moving glaze around that works really good is it's called a Leon or Neon Leon. It's this little tool. This is what I learned in trade school for faux finishing. You use this for moving glaze around. You can use it on your walls. You can use it on your tombstones. You could use it on your candles. Once you get your pigment in there, it helps smooth things out. But this brush actually did a pretty good job. I don't need that but that's a very handy tool to have but so here we go looks much more realistic so next i will drill a hole through the center and i will um hook up my led candle for the next part i will get my drill and i will find center and that will drill through the hot glue and that EDA foam. And that'll give me a little hole where I can put my wiring through. Now, um, I was not happy with the plastic tips that came on fake fake candles. I just didn't like that. I wanted something that had more movement to it and something that was larger. So I sculpted some various flame shapes out of monster clay. I made a silicone mold and casted them because I wanted something that's going to show like a movement of fire. So um, I made some of my own tips and then I drilled a hole the same width as the LED and then I popped it in there and hot glued it. So then what I'm gonna do is put that through the hole that I made. Trying to, okay. And then for a more realistic look, I'm only gonna insert it like partial way because I like the black, because it looks like the wick. I noticed that no faux candles show the wick it's always just the flame coming straight out of the base and i think that leaving just that little bit makes it look more realistic and i just like the larger tip versus the smaller just little plasticky ones that you can get or the tea lights i think this just looks more custom and more realistic so next i will hook them up I've got my wire soldered. Now I'm going to put one of those heat shrinking tubes over it. Kind of protect it right there in the middle. Got my heat gun. in there
Here's our candle. Let's plug this in so we can see this baby glow. Ta-da! We have a flickering candle. Let's go plug it in at the dark and see how it looks. 